Yo, 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 it's your main boy Crit here with a brand new Data Slate review, yo. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and comment, let me know what you think about this latest balanced data slate. And remember, I've got a Discord you can check out in the episode description below for free, an affiliate link element games, and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. But let's get on with the video. New balanced data slate. I was actually thinking for a second it wouldn't happen, but it did. Annoyingly, while I'm at work. So I'm currently recording this at 9 p.m. at night in the UK. So uh, as you can see, there's an article attached to this balanced data slate. No video. And as you can see on the downloads, the most recent thing is the balanced data slate. So you can find this on the Warhammer community download section. So let's get into it because I've been itching to go through it. So as for the balanced data slate, remember new changes are with asterisks. Everything else is just unchanged. I would prefer if it was a different color, but at least we've got it in a nice format like this. So first up, we have Pathfinder changes, and there's been quite a few, as I kind of thought there would be. So the first thing is the recon drone has lost when you analyze someone. It's lost giving relentless and instead grants a single reroll. Now I've seen a lot of people say this grants balanced, which is incorrect, because if it granted balance, then it wouldn't stack with your bonded uh, strategic ploy. So this just gives you an additional reroll instead of relentless. I mean, I don't understand why they didn't just revert how much the recon drone cost in terms of just two operatives, because you would still always take the recon drone, because remember, it's 12 wounds, a four up save, a six attack gun hitting on fours, re-rolling ones, three, four, and it gives you a free recon dash. Like, why, why would you not pick it? Then the drone controller Pathfinder operatives drone scout ability has changed. And it now does three different things, depending on what kill zone you're playing on. So if you're playing on open, it hasn't changed at all. It's exactly the same. If you're playing in hazardous area kill zone, so basically beta decima, the drone must be set up wholly within two white of your drop zone. That's the only change. Then if you're playing on into the dark, you cannot forward deploy. Instead, at the end of the scouting step, if a drone operative is wholly within your drop zone and has a conceal order, it can perform a free normal move and or operate hack, hatch action and its order, order cannot be changed in the first turning point. So the weird thing is, pretty much everyone was asking for this to be changed in some way. Namely, like, at least you can't change from conceal to engage, turning point one. I don't know if that was the intention, because there's no video accompanying this balanced data slate. But as per the wording, you are only locked into a conceal order on Into the Dark. So you can still on open, you can still forward deploy the drone six inches, then give it an APL, and then it can do move dash shoot with infiltration. So no, no real change there. On beta decima, you just deploy four inches instead of six, but you can still get plus one APL, move dash shoot. And then it's only on Into the Dark where you're locked into conceal. So it's mainly just a nerf for Into the Dark because it doesn't really change much on Beta Decima except you now lose two inches of movement, but you can still reach the important central vantage points. And then the final thing is Recon Sweep cannot be used during the first turning point. So it's still, I mean, I thought it was going to be CP1+. plus. This is a fine change, right? It, this massively lessens the Pathfinder Alpha Strike, but it's a very confusing set of changes. Like, it feels like they didn't want to go back on the recon drone being two operatives and instead only made it a little bit worse. The drone controller now does three different things to play, depending on whether you're playing on open, into the dark, or beta decima. And the only fixed change is rec uh, recon sweep doesn't work turning point one. So pathfinders can't do crazy alpha strikes. But that wasn't their main problem. But I mean, it is what it is. At least it's some pathfinder changes, I guess. It now just means they lose a little bit harder on Into the Dark, but fine. Then we have a change for Legionary. Your roster can contain operatives with all four marks of chaos keywords. Oddly, they forgot Mark of Chaos Undivided, which is a fifth. But when selecting a kill team for the battle, you, can unux you can't select operatives with the corn keyword if you've selected any wood slash and vice versa. So basically, roster is unlocked, right? Roster is free. You can now take Nurgle and Zinch. So that might be all the buff Legionary needs. I am kind of disappointed we didn't get a buff for the Butcher, like going to five attacks, as well as tweaking their strategic ploy, so double fight and double shoot is just a combined stratagem. I mean, it's a nice quality of life change, but I feel they could have gone a bit further, further 
but you know, at least at least we got roster unlocked. Blooded have also seen technically more of a clarification than a nurse. A nerf. Sorry, I'm a nurse. And then I forgot the Trey Ogren didn't have this rule, but basically light terrain and operatives with a wound cast to 15 or less cannot provide cover for this operative. So it's not really a nerf, it's more just a modernization because it matches Nightmare Hawks as well as the Patriarch. So kind of hoping for something else, but at least it's fine. Like some blooded players are quite annoyed, but I mean, you still can take a blooded, it, you can still take a blooded Ogryn. It's now just harder to keep safe. Next, we come to Hyrotech Circle and they've had one actually quite big change. I didn't realize it at first until I read previous balanced data slates, but the main change is reanimation protocols ability. Operatives are successfully reanimated on a two plus. They regain D3 plus two lost wounds and can instead be set up within blue of that token, but not within engagement range within order of your choice. So a lot of things people missed, including myself, was they've now changed it. So it happens after reanimations because when they first changed it, they changed it to happen before you reanimated. So you would, uh, or you know, when you would heal for living metal. So basically, instead of reanimating, then also healing with living metal, you now just reanimate. So instead of coming up back with like, you know, D3 plus three wounds, coming back on like six to eight wounds, you know, you now come back with a maximum of five wounds, which is actually pretty rough. I mean, it's quite a huge change to the kill team. I personally would have preferred if they kept it the same, but reanimation works on a three up. And then if it fails, next turning point it works on the two up. This change, I think, is fine. It stops Hyrotech being super, super aggressive to the point where you kind of don't want to kill them because they would come back with more wounds if you did kill them. Now it actually makes them more they have to be more defensive. They can't just rush operatives up and go like I'm gonna rec I'm gonna come back with full wounds effectively. You are also encouraged to take the Technomancer more, but it's an interesting change. I like it. I think it's just kind of out of nowhere. Kind of feels a bit too severe, but I think it's a nice bridge considering they resurrect on a two up. Then we have the Exaction Squad. They they also have gotten more changes again. So the Terminal Decree Strategic Ploy, it has been changed. So each time a friendly operative makes a shooting attack against operative within two white of it, or each time a friendly gunner makes a shooting attack regardless of distance, they get to reroll one dice. Right, so this is just a buff towards gunners. So basically now your grenade launcher gets to reroll from any distance, as well as your heavy stubber. And technically you now get a reroll with your Weber, which is nice. I think that's a nice quality of life improvement. It does kind of go away like into the buffing gunners so they don't get plus one ballistic skill. I think it's a nice change there. Then dispense justice strategic ploy. So this is if you haven't moved more than your charge distance when in the fight action in the when you when you're fought, you can now reroll any or all of your attack dice of one result instead of just rerolling an attack dice. So this actually helps with your maces a lot. So you actually get more use out of them. A nice buff to this ploy. And it's kind of interesting they buffed exactions real reliability in terms of accuracy and rerolls. Pretty good. Like not not complaining there, although I still would have liked batons to be more damaging than fists. Please, why? Like, this is the mystery of this edition of Kill Team for me. How are batons weaker than fists? Anyway, really good buffs there for Exaction. They now just get so many rerolls. Really, really good. Then out of nowhere, we've got Halfkin Salvager changes. So they have had some more again. So all operatives gain the following ability, Secure Salvage. Each time a friendly Halfkin Salvage operative fights in combat, if it's within white of an objective marker, in the resolve successful hit step of that combat, you can subtract one from the damage inflicted from one of your opponent's successful hits to a minimum of three. So this applies to crits and normal hits, right? This is weird. I don't know why this kill team got this buff. If I was a... <laughs> A Hankin Jaeger player, I would be contacting my lawyers because the salvagers have robbed you blind. It does only apply in melee, but the thing is, this kill team was already quite resilient to shooting, so it just makes them even crazier when they have plasma knives or any other decent melee weapon. So just 
Very strange. I'm not sure why they got that. So then the Thane also gains the following ability. Force field. The first time an attack dice inflicts four or more damage on this operative during the battle, ignore that inflicted damage. So he basically kind of gets a really situational, but very good, just a scratch. Now, Hankin Jaeger players, it's just fine, right? Don't don't worry. Like, I'm not complaining about these Halfkin salvager buffs. I don't think they were needed, but my gosh, yes. Whoever pushed these through, thank you so much. Like, I don't understand, but it's great. Like, this team definitely needed damage negation, right? It really needed that, especially in melee where it's one weakness. So that's fine. Really good. I'm just like very confused why they got these specific changes. Then we've also had Felgor Ravager changes. So these are quite extensive. So the Flux Spray, Mangler and Vandal operatives replace all instances of Relentless with Ceaseless, which is kind of a big hit for the Mangler and Vandal because they hit on fours generally. So losing that uh, Relentless is kind of huge. They now have to kind of rely on charging with support, which is good. I think that's fine. The Flux Bray, the Flux Bray losing Relentless, kind of a big hit as well. You're going to have to be more reliant on your, you know, reckless ag aggression strategic ploy, where you just basically reroll all of your dice or none of them. Then the Gnarl Scar and Mangle operatives are down to 10 wounds from 11. They both lose a wound, which is fine. I mean, technically, I think all Velgor operatives should have gone down by one wound. But it's nice they're all now 10 wounds and the leader. That's fine there. Then Reckless Determination Strategic Deploy. Each time a shooting attack is made against a friendly Felgor operative that is not ready and is not in cover, then you get the benefit of it, which means you get to auto retain a dice, which I find quite weird, right? I guess there was like, I know Ace was talking about how he was relying on shooting with his Felgor quite a lot. So I guess this is where this change may be based upon. But I find that really weird. I think this is just a weird side grade. It kind of mirrors the Necron ploy, which does something similar. I just didn't think that was a big issue. It's just like kicking the goats when they're down. I guess this... So the thing is, because Frenzy is completely unchanged, it does hurt Felgor into S-tier teams and brings them slightly down. Like, I don't think they're S-tier anymore, but they're still a solid A-tier team. Frenzy is unchanged. You're just a lot weaker and, you know, you have to re rely on, like, setting up charges more which is fine. I mean, if only you had some kind of ability that would kind of allow you to stay in combat even if you were killed once to provide combat support for other operatives. But anyway, not going to deny it, it's a quite big hit and it's interesting they went this way instead of just making Frenzy completely different, but it's a good change to see regardless. And look, we got our final season free change, right? This, this is the spicy one, right? So... Scout Squad, they get one additional operative, not a sergeant, so you can't have two sergeants for some reason if you thought you could. And then the Hunter and Warrior operatives add one to both damage characteristics of their combat blades. So a Space Marine with a knife is a 4-5, like Space Marine Reaver, or even a normal Intercessors like 3-5. A Scout with a knife is now 4-6. We are now in a weird world where a Scout Warrior technically out damages the scout sergeant with a chainsword, right? Somehow a smaller blade is more damaging than a chainsword. Fine, whatever. The hunter is now insane. If he does a backflip, he is now 6-6 six, because six, he hits on freeze with, with lethal free up, going from 4-6 to 6-6 six, six damage. You know, if you give him double fight and he charges two 12, 12 wound marines, he will kill them both just because he did a really sick backflip. I don't, I don't understand this change. This is the laziest change you could have done. I really, I, I really don't like this change. Like scouts definitely needed a buff, but this kind of buff is really bad because not only does it just, it's just kind of lazy, right? Like adding an operative is huge, but adding an operative to the scout team is huge because now they go to 10 operatives with a minimum of 10 wounds each and a four up save. This is a pure stat check team now. Like look at like, any 10 operative team there's only seven or eight wounds with the four up save now just gets completely outclassed by scouts and i don't think that's fair at all and then it's just like they've got like a great build you can just take as five shotguns and five knives 
that will just mess up a ton of teams because they have to deal with five shotguns hitting on twos and then you've got five knife uh, five scouts with knives who are just gonna like you called out a knife this is a knife right this is just ridiculous i i really don't like this change they could have done as i said in my suggestions they could have done a much more interesting change given them more access to scouting options with their ability you know give the gunners cumbersome now you're literally just going to go how many shotguns and combat knives can i take really disappointed with this one like they need like i'm not gonna lie they needed a huge buff but this is a buff in the wrong way so for the balanced data slate overview i'm not too upset with it i think i'm fine all right everyone was hoping for like this big calamitous balanced data slate but you know why i'm happy with it because it confirms one thing to me this is a pre-edition balanced data slate not much was changed apart from scouts and yeah you know we, we saw some nerfs some weird buffs but nothing too major the meta hasn't been shaken up too much you know i mean i would have loved a hankin jaeger buff as in terms of just giving them plus one movement or even plus two movement you know say it's like oh this is something we caught in development after they were finalized that would have been fine right but as i said they're probably saving everything for the next edition we saw something kind of similar with age of sigma where they didn't get much of a change and even 40k their previous balance day slate didn't do much because they were waiting for the big one now you may call me crazy a lot of people have but that's what i think uh, i am kind of the, mo the thing I'm most upset with is the scout change, which I've just gone through. You know, there's lots of big winners, like, thank you, Galapox, you know? <sighs> you know, me and a certain American friend are very, very happy. Our Galapox are remaining where they are. It's great. But I don't think the meta is going to shape too much. I mean, if, if you really want to bet on a safe kill team, just pick Brood Brothers. They are basically not going to get here you'll be completely fine with those even mandrakes and nemesis claw i think those are all solid safe bets but it's an interesting one as i said summarizing the balance data slate pathfinders got nerfed in terms of their alpha strike you need to remember that the four deployed now does three different things depending on what kills only you're playing on in terms of open into the dark and beta decima Pathfinders also can't recon sweep turning point one, and the recon drone now gives a single reroll instead of relentless, notably not balanced. Legionary now have all marks unlocked on their chaos roster, which is pretty cool. Exaction squad get rerolls for their gunners at any range instead of just being at four white, and in combat their combat ploy lets them reroll any single dice result instead of just one necron reanimation now still works on a two up but only heals d3 two plus d3 oh well, d3 plus two wounds instead of working after reanimation so you're basically limited to healing five wounds felgor have had several operatives well like the mangler and nalskar go down to 10 wounds anything that had relentless goes down to ceaseless you know huge changes there for reliability and then <laughs> You know, Hankin, Halfkin, sorry, half can get minus one damage when in combat on an objective to a minimum of one on one attack dice. And their leader basically has just a scratch once per game against four damage or more. And then, you know, you've got the scouts. Look, this is the scout meta. Replace that poor Blades of Cain, poor Blades of Cain, no buffs where scouts get plus one operative and all knives do four, six damage. Crazy. This is the meta. This is what Games Workshop wanted to show us. You know, that lone blades of cane surrounded by all those scouts you just replace that with any faction now i mean it's not bad i still think this balanced ASL was pretty good because it didn't change too much i think the scout change scouts are going to be a problem i'm expecting to see a lot of scouts but i don't think they will dominate the meta they will just stat check they're a new gatekeeping faction if you don't have enough damage to deal with scouts then you can't really play the game because scouts are just going to shoot in popularity Everyone loves running shotguns and knives. Blooded also got slightly nerfed with the Ogren, but that's more of a clarification in my books, updating them for other kill teams. I mean, I really would have loved Blades of Cain for Die Avengers just to be buffed to compendium level. I think everyone would have been happy with that. Just some very weird changes in this balance data slate. Technically, Wormblade and Gellapox should have been nerfed as well, including Inquisitorial Agents, but because they weren't, there are technically still quite a lot of bad well not bad matchups matchups brood brothers need to watch out for which is kind of good you know in that regard maybe that's why those factions weren't hit i mean people were quite kind of upset about the blooded nerf but once again it's not really a nerf it's just a clarification it's just a strange balanced data slate like 
it's good and bad. It's okay, just a middling. Nothing too extreme apart from the scouts. Oh my gosh, scout meta, shotgun and knives all the way. Literally everyone's going to be doing backflips, going I'm lethal free up with six damage, but it's fine. Scouts are cool. Scouts are cool. You know, they're, <laughs> they've been laughing since I I could remember, but they're not going to laugh anymore. But that's that's pretty much it from me today. Please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of today's video. Do you like the balanced data slate or not? Let me know what you think. And remember, I've got a Discord you can check down in the episode description below, an affiliate link in the games, and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. And I'll quickly shout my patrons. So for my adepts of the crew, I have Willax, Tom, Ticket the Cat, Super Cow, Sam, Nick, Mercenary Q, John Thomas, Graham Freeman, David, Dave Meets World, Dad of Goldens, and then for my veterans of the crew, I have Samja. So thank you so much for all your support. It really means a lot to me and helps support the channel because without your support, I wouldn't have been able to do that streamed commentary on my tournament and other tournaments going forwards. But yeah, you know, I'll have another video up eventually when I fully digest the balance data slate. A lot of interesting changes. This is effectively, as I said, the end of season balance data slate because we're likely just to get a new edition instead. Maybe announced at Gamescon. You know, we'll see. Or Nova could be announced at Nova. As I said, just kind of fine. I think the scout change was very lazy. Probably going to cause a lot of unintended side effects on the meta. But it makes sense to just like, fine, just give them plus one operative. We'll deal with it when it comes with the new edition. Pathfinder's still crazy, just not as oppressive if they go alpha strike mode, but that wasn't their main strength. And then Felgor are just kind of still gatekeeping, but now less reliable, like the crazy goats they are. And also, Halfkin are just like, are just salvaging and stealing everything from the Harnkin Jaegers. But until next time, no matter what happens to your faction, remember there's always a chance to win, as long as you can roll a crit. From your boy, crit, yeah, 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 crit, 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 aww.